Good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips via the Brave Browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I thank you. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded currency exchange planner in the description of this video. Voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the Dinar community. Created by a Denarian, for Denarians, to ensure your exchange goes smoothly and for mapping out all your future financial goals and assets, including the Iraqi Dinar, Vietnamese Dong, Iranian Rattle and of course gold and silver my favorites, and many more. When you decide you want to unleash the full power of the planner, they use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off along with the newly upgraded version 8 mobile application added free for my subscribers for a limited time. A preview of both the mobile application and the desktop planner is made available on the website for your convenience. Go check them both out today and download your trial copy. I assure you, once you see the planner in action, you will know why it is the number one planner in Dinarland. Lock in your copy today, the link is in the description. I also recommend that you register as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program, the gold program designed to save gold in your choice from a gram up to any amount you would like. They mount each fully certified gram of gold on a credit card style placard for easy storage and send it directly to your door via FedEx. It makes saving physical gold easy and affordable for everyone, one gram at a time. It is free to register and get yourself all set up for both pre and post exchange gold saving. Both the links to the newly upgraded currency exchange planner as well as the carrot bar gold savings program are in the description box below. Always remember, knowledge is power, using that knowledge is powerful. First article of interest for today. Iraqi President Announces Replacement for Caretaker PM Adil Abdul Mahdi Iraqi President Barim Sali appointed Mohammed Tafiq Alawi as the country's new Prime Minister on February 1, 2020. Herbal, Kurdistan 24, Iraqi President Barim Sali on Saturday announced that Mohammed Tafiq Alawi would replace Iraq's caretaker Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi. The issue of who will take Abdul Mahdi's post has been the focus of a key demand of protesters, who have rejected all candidates so far put forth by the two leading blocs in the Iraqi parliament. President Saleh designated Alawi, who previously served as Iraq's Minister of Communications. Abdul Mahdi's successor will be an interim leader of the government and it will be up to him to form a cabinet within a month ahead of early legislative elections which protesters hope will put an end to the seemingly impenetrable ruling class that has dominated Iraqi politics since the fall of the former regime in 2003. The news comes amid ongoing anti-government protests across parts of central and southern Iraq. Over 600 people have died, and thousands more injured since demonstrations began in October 2019. The protests led Abdul Mahdi to submit his resignation in November. March's continuous protesters call for an end to the public's economic woes and a complete governmental overhaul amid shortages of public services, high rates of unemployment, and chronic institutional corruption. Next article of interest, Mohammed Tafiq Alawi announced his mandate to form a government. Mohammed Tafiq Alawi announced, on Saturday, that he was mandated by the President of the Republic, Baram Sali, to form a government. And while he called on the demonstrators to continue with the demonstrations, he stressed that he did not deserve the position if he did not fulfill the demands of the demonstrators. Alawi said in a televised statement that, after the President of the Republic mandated me to form the government a little while ago, I wanted to address the demonstrators in general, stating that, without your courage, there would be no change in the country, you have endured a lot and have endured a lot and I believe in you and ask you to continue the demonstrations. He added, because if you are not with me, I will be alone and I will not be able to do anything. He explained, I am proud of what you have done for change, 
and I am now an employee of you and carry a big message. Do not return if you do not take what you want, pretend and chant this your country and this is your right. A law we continued, we must protect you instead of suppressing you and the state's arms should be lifted in the face of those who raise their weapons against you, and stay accountable to the killers, compensate the families of the martyrs, treat the wounded, return the prestige of the state and the security forces, reform the economy, fight corruption and form a government. He stressed, if the political blocs imposed their candidates, then I will go out and speak with you, and leave this mandate as you left your studies for the sake of the homeland, so I will leave the mandate for you with what my conscience dictates. Next article of interest. A law we calls for opening a direct dialogue with peaceful demonstrators. On Saturday 1st February 2020, Prime Minister-designate Mohammed Tafiq Allah we called for an open dialogue with peaceful demonstrators, stressing that he would form a consultative team in his office with the participation of representatives of the demonstrators. In his speech, Allah we said, after being assigned to head the government, I affirmed the commitment to provide the greatest amount of job opportunities to citizens by starting industrial and investment projects and laying the foundations for the rentier economy and not relying on oil. A law we pledge to fight corruption, dissolve economic bodies, achieve security and safety for all people, confine arms to the state, refrain from using live weapons, and protect Iraq from any external interference or I would allow Iraq to be an arena for settling scores. A law we called for launching a direct dialogue with the demonstrators, and I will supervise this dialogue to resolve the country's crises and bring him to safety, pledging to protect the peaceful demonstrators and release the innocent. And I will set up an advisory team in the Prime Minister's office with the participation of representatives of the demonstrators calling for the continuation of the demonstrations to achieve the desired reforms. Next article of interest. The United Nations welcomes Aloha's mandate and urges action to implement reforms and accountability. The Special Representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations in Iraq, Mrs. Janine Hens Blackshart, welcomes the appointment of a Prime Minister, Mr. Mohammed Tafiq Alawi. It urges urgent action first and foremost, to achieve fundamental reforms and to meet the legitimate demands of the people for justice and accountability. She said, Iraq is in urgent need of moving forward. The Prime Minister-designate faces a huge task, to quickly form a cabinet and to approve Parliament to move forward with meaningful reforms that meet popular demands and achieve justice and accountability. The road ahead is still fraught with difficulties. Progress will require the support of all actors involved in the work of the Prime Minister-designate to serve the Iraqi people. The commitments contained in the Prime Minister's designated statement meet many of the demands of peaceful protesters. While this is certainly an encouraging and welcome sign, the Iraqi people will ultimately judge the leadership of the country through results and achievements. The United Nations has repeatedly called on all stakeholders to move beyond partisanship and put the national interest first. It is time to act. Ms. Hens Blackshart urges that no effort be spared to get Iraq out of its crisis. The United Nations will continue to support the Iraqi people and their government to build a more peaceful, just and prosperous Iraq. Next article of interest. Mohammed Alawi announces his mandate to head. A message attributed to Mohammed Tafiq Alawi on Saturday revealed his assignment by President of the Republic Baram Ahmed Saleh to the post of Prime Minister to succeed resigning Adel Abdul Mahdi. The text of the attributed letter states, I extend my sincere thanks to His Excellency the President of the Republic, Dr. Baram Saleh, and all the brothers who have placed their trust in us and made unremitting efforts to serve the country through my assignment to this task. I cannot fail to thank the rational authority for its patriarchal and guiding role for all of our dear countrymen, especially in this crucial stage in the history of Iraq. This mandate puts in my neck a great historical responsibility, 
so I pledge to God and I pledge to my honorable people that I seek all the possibilities I have to serve this country and promise them that the blood of the martyrs of the demonstrators and the security forces will not be in vain, and the aggressors and criminals will be held accountable and submitted to the judiciary to obtain their just punishment. I pledge, God willing, to form a government away from sectarian, partisan, and narrow sectional quotas, representing all the diverse spectrums and cultures of the honorable Iraqi people, and to involve the most talented of the sons and daughters of our people. I pledge to prepare for early elections in consultation with the relevant authorities, including the Independent High Electoral Commission and the United Nations, as a primary partner for Iraq in this regard, according to constitutional mechanisms and laws in force. In this regard, I urge the distinguished parliament to expedite the completion of the election law in order to meet the people's conquests and in accordance with the directions of the rational authority. I pledge to protect the electoral protection process and to stand against any interference that might affect the integrity, fairness, and transparency of its results and to restore public confidence in it. I also pledge to provide the greatest amount of work opportunities to citizens by starting development, industrial, production and housing projects, and creating investment renaissance and laying the foundations for changing the rentier economy approach to an investment economy away from full dependence on oil resources. I pledge to achieve security and safety for all the Iraqi people, to confine arms to the state, and that there is no authority above the rule of law, and I pledge to protect peaceful demonstrators and release innocent detainees in accordance with the Constitution, law, and coordination with the judiciary. I also pledge to protect Iraq from any foreign interference, and I will not allow Iraq to be an arena for settling scores and conflicts. I hope the international and regional community will be of assistance to Iraq at this sensitive stage given that the security of Iraq is among the security of the region and the world at large, especially as we still face an enemy that is waiting for us, which is terrorism. Iraq must restore its positive and neutral role in achieving stability for the region and the world. I pledge to submit a periodic report to the Iraqi people through the House of Representatives on the progress of the government or the challenges it faces. I also call for an immediate dialogue with peaceful demonstrators to work to achieve their legitimate demands in accordance with the Constitution and the law, and I will personally supervise this dialogue. I wish my sons and daughters from the Iraqi people to be a help and support for me after I rely on God Almighty to solve the country's crises and bring him to safety. May God have mercy on the martyrs of Iraq and our best wishes for a speedy recovery. Iraq lived free and happy for itself. God bless. Your brother Muhammad Tafiq Alawi. Next article of interest. IMF has another trick up its sleeve when fiat fails its own coin SDR. Virtually everybody knows what a dollar is, but not as many know about the SDR. The International Monetary Funds, IMF, Special Drawing Rights is an international monetary reserve system created specifically to address limitations of gold and standard fiat currencies such as the USD. In short, should these fail, central banks and their governments retain the ability to trade and plan with liquidity via another, exclusive instrument, the SDR. An artificial currency. The SDR is not an actual currency, according to the IMF but a potential claim on the freely usable currencies of IMF members. As the official unit of account for the group, and an instrument only available to member countries' central banks, the IMF itself and designated official entities, SDR exclusive assets. The average individual cannot get their hands on SDR. Comprising a basket of major global currencies, the composition of the special drawing rights is reviewed in five-year intervals. Currently the SDR utilizes USD, KNI, JPY, and GBP. The system is said to enable liquidity in international finance when assets like gold or other fiat currencies fail to do so. In the event of an unprecedented, worldwide economic collapse, SDR could become a centralized means by which to rebuild global trade networks. In fact, 
After the global downturn of 2008-09, the IMF's issuance of SDR to member countries spiked dramatically in an attempt to re-stabilize the world economy. SDR allocation spiked by an unprecedented $182.7 billion in 2009 in response to the global economic crisis. Source, IMF. Creation of SDR. The SDR system was created in 1969 and was initially defined as equivalent to 0.888671 grams of fine gold, which, at the time, was also equivalent to one US dollar, IMF.org relates. After the collapse of the Bretton Woods system, the SDR was redefined as a basket of currencies. Of course, the collapse of Bretton Woods meant the international abandonment of the gold standard and the beginning of floating exchange rates. SDR is a uniquely isolated system, with its own exclusive economy and management, including interest rates set weekly and allocations to member countries determined via IMF criteria. Controversy Control in crypto. The International Monetary Fund is well known as a financial superpower, exercising great influence in a wide scope of global affairs. The group has drawn sharp criticism throughout the years for allegedly destroying local economies in agriculture, negatively affecting healthcare, and over regulation of competing currencies in monetary instruments such as Bitcoin and crypto. In 2018, the group interestingly discouraged the Marshall Islands from creating their own cryptocurrency which could potentially challenge dollar hegemony on the islands, while just months later advocating central bank-issued digital currencies in other, more powerful national economies. While the Marshall Islands appear to be pressing on with their plan, still advocating the SOV national currency designed to fight inflation, Standing up to a surveillance and regulatory behemoth like the IMF is not easily done, and likely not without serious compromises. Unlike SDR, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are not regulated or are allocated by a centralized, monetary surveillance authority such as the IMF. This has been a source of concern for the group, with former IMF head and European Central Bank presidential nominee Christine Lagarde stating in April. I think the role of the disruptor is in anything that is using distributed ledger technology, whether you call it crypto, assets, currencies, or whatever. That is clearly shaking the system. For central bankers, this is clearly a threat to stability. Some advocates of radical financial freedom, however, believe that a decentralized shakeup of the old order may be just what is needed. After all, if the IMF can have its own special emergency currency in today's climate of global financial instability, why not everyone else? Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog for all of today's articles of interest and find me on Facebook as I also post them on there as well. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded currency exchange planner before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. This package will only be available for a limited time, so go for it, pick up yours today. With the currency exchange planner on your team, the banks don't have a chance of taking advantage of your newfound wealth. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. This program is made so even low-income people can buy gold, by offering it one gram at a time, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today. It's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. You can always turn gold back into any kind of fiat money you want or need later. The gold will always be in your possession not the banks who do not care about your well-being. Above all the gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad. The dollar I assure you will not. Did you know that the dollar only has 0.0389 cents purchasing power left when compared to its original purchasing power when the dollar first came out? Fiat currencies are based on debt, 
and are designed to fail over time. Ask yourself this. Why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Over and out. The Denarian.